ならやってみろふざけんじゃねえIt is a rank 6 vehicle sitting at 8.7 BR. Because of this rank, it will allow you to grind the entire Japanese tech tree currently in game with the shown modifiers. You can also see the repair course here. This light tank is an 8x8 APC with an engine delivering 570 horsepower. Combined with its 26 tons, it has an output of 21.9 horsepower per ton, which is actually the highest horsepower per ton of any other wheel light vehicles of this VR. This allows the Type 16 to reach a top speed of 100 km per hour. When it comes to reverse speed, it can reach 37 km per hour, also one of the highest among other wheel vehicles. The only issue I see with the Type 16 performance would be the fact that the transmission of this vehicle doesn't seem to be too good. It struggles with its first gear. If your Type 16 is completely stopped and you try to go uphill, you will have a very hard time doing so. As you see in this clip, we compare the Type 16 going uphill with the CTL 11, a light tank which features 19.6 horsepower per ton, lower than the Type 16. As you see here, the Type 16 was not able to get to the top. This is due to the horrible acceleration that the Type 16 has on low gears. This is something to take into consideration despite some players claiming that the horsepower per ton is the main source of acceleration, but it is actually the transmission what can make the biggest difference. So probably this detail is the worst part when it comes to the performance of this vehicle. But regardless, it features an overall better mobility compared to other wheel vehicles at this VR. For instance, the infamous WMA301, now sitting at the same VR as the Type 16, is worse in pretty much all aspects compared to the Type 16. Since my intention is to do a quick review, I won't be getting into deep detail regarding the armor, but overall, the front of this vehicle is well armored compared to other wheel vehicles. Using, for example, again, the WMA at the same VR can be easily destroyed with a 50 cal machine gun, but this is not the case with the Type 16. Even on the sides, the Type 16 is well protected against 50 cal machine guns, only the lower chassis is vulnerable. Needless to say that anything more powerful than a 50 cal will easily destroy your vehicle. Even if the front can sustain some autocannon hits, it won't take long until the whole vehicle is disabled. The Type 16 also features a laser warning system, so you will get notified if any enemy is using their rangefinders on you or if drones are targeting you. Now, talking about the armament, the Type 16 features a 105mm gun following NATO doctrines. Of course, the gun is fully stabilized and features a laser rangefinder expected at this VR. For the reload speed, we have an 8.7 second stock reload speed, which is kind of a standard for this type of vehicle at this VR, and a top reload speed of 6.7 seconds aced. The turret rotation speed is not too good, at 17.9 degrees per second stock, 
and 30 degree per second aced. So as I mentioned, it's not too good compared to other wheel vehicles at this VR. The Ruikat 105, for comparison, has a 40 degree per second aced. In the Japanese tech tree, this is not exclusive to the Type 16, as most top tier Japanese tanks have a below average target rotation speed. One of the best traits of this vehicle is the fact that it features Generation 3 thermal optics for both the gunner and commander, making it the only wheel vehicle, along with the wolf pack, to feature such advanced optics. We also have a 50 cal machine gun, which is very good to destroy enemy helicopters or light armor vehicles. Additionally, since this is a light vehicle, we also have the Scout UAV, which is very useful to find enemies. Regarding the ammo, this Type 16 has the same choices for ammo as the Tech 3 prototype version. Really, the clear ammo choice is the M735 APFSDS, not as good as the Type 93 that you can find in the 9.0 Type 16 version, but still a decent round. This is the same APFSDS round used by the XM1. Overall, the round is sufficient for its VR, but playing up the earth, you might face T-72s and similar vehicles which are very hard to deal with up front. If you use the XM1, you're probably already very aware of these APFSDS limitations. Now for the conclusion of this quick review, I think the Type 16 FPS is a good vehicle, it performs very well and it probably is one of the best, if not the best, 8.7 wheel light tanks. The only problem is that it does not feel consistent in a game as your lineup choices are limited. I think Gaijin is adding more wheel light tanks as the main top tier premiums, since even bad players can still grind with them by capturing points using the speed or just supporting the team. Gaijin removed the Type 74G to replace it with this tank, and yes, they most likely did this because the Type 74 wasn't performing too well at 9.0. It's inferior to other premium vehicles such as the Leopard L44. Of course, if you do already own the Type 74G, that will expand your possibilities compared to just spawning one premium vehicle and leaving after dying. Down the road of grinding, you can add the Type 89 or the rest of the Tech 3 Type 16 to your lineup, but the grind is painful and honestly, Japan seems to lack options. Overall, I would recommend this vehicle if you really, really want to grind the Japanese Tech 3 since you don't have any other options now that they removed the Type 74G. Now that's it for the Type 16 FPS, I hope this review was informative for you and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.